So that's my talk. Uh, polling is good enough for the World Wide Web, and it's good enough for you. Um, this is the first time I tried making slides with Markdown. I didn't really get to styling them with CSS, so sorry. They're a little boring, but they're fun to make. Um, ooh, that one doesn't look very good. Uh, my slides are up on GitHub. I wonder if they're all going to do that. Nope, it's just this one. It's too long um, if you like want to look at them. Um, my name is Jessica Lynn Suttles. I tweet at JL Suttles. Um, I live in Santa Monica, California. I'm just up here for the week visiting. Yesterday was awesome. It's a little rainy today, though. <laughs> yeah. I guess I don't get much of it in LA, so it's nice. Yeah. Um, I work for a company, G5 Search Marketing. They recently dropped the search marketing from their name, but I think it like explains a little bit more what they do. Um, they make websites and SEOify them for people. And I'm part of a team that works remotely. We're working on like breaking up the architecture into more service oriented. Um, and so as we were like breaking this up, we started talking about how our services are going to talk to each other. We're going to use push or pull. And it started this like thought process. Um, my Mr. Manager there is Shane Becker. Uh, vegan straight edge on the internet. He lives in Hollywood, California at his house that he calls uh, the farmhouse. And my other friend Steve Klabnik was living with him for a while. Um, and they are both super interested in this topic and like got me interested in it. Um, so there's a podcast that they both recorded, uh, the farmhouse podcast on this topic. So if you're interested in other resources. So back to my talk. So words are really hard. Um, I've kind of like evolved my understanding of these different words as I was like trying to actually write my thoughts down on the topic. Um, so like I don't mean that words are like soft or hard, right? I mean that like words are difficult, um, which is to say that they're confusing. So I want to start with some definitions. Start out with uh, push is a style of communication where the request is initiated by the publisher of the data. And poll is a style of communication where the request um, is initiated by the consumer of the data. So push and pull are antonyms. And they indicate direction of communication. Uh, polling is a style of communication where multiple polls are used um, to sa sample the server state at an interval. So polling uses polls. Um, so again, it just like indicates a continual process that's happening with a one direction of communication. Uh, so historically in computers, if two components needed to talk to each other, they used polling. And so when it came time to design the web, it was just natural to use polling. And the web uses um, client server model, which I'm sure you're under familiar with, if you're familiar with the web. I wasn't sure what my audience is going to be like. so. Um, Assigns two roles to computers in a network, client or server. Um, the server selectively shares its resources, and the client initiates contact with the server to make use of those resources. The important part there being that it initiates the contact in order to use the data. So the web's pretty large and successful as far as software projects go, so there must be something that good that's happening from this model. Uh, but lately, people have been moving towards a push model. And I think that's because it feels natural. Um, for instance, right now, I have information that I want to share with you. So I'm presenting in front of all of you, and I'm pushing this information to you. I'm not like, waiting for you to come ask me about the information that I want to give you. Um, but it can be expensive. So it's nice that like, I have an audience, and I get to push to all of you at once right now. But that doesn't work the same um, in the web land. So expense can refer to um, server requests, like the number of requests that are sent out, and then also the resources that it takes to process the requests. And in Webland, um, push requests scale linearly. So if I wanted to share information with like each one of you via push on the web, I would need a one push request for each of you. So server needs to initiate one request per client. Um, and that requires a lot of server resources. This is expensive because it's sending a lot of requests, and it's also expensive because, because it's sending a lot of requests, it's using a lot of server resources. So let's imagine a Twitter conversation, um, and Ash and I each have 100 Twitter followers, and we send three messages. So Ash tweets the first tweet, and 
She has 100 followers, so if this is built on push, then 100 push requests need to go out to each of her followers so that they can all see her tweet. And I respond, um, and another 100 push requests go out. And then she responds, another 100. So under the push model, this would take a minimum of 300 requests. It's like assuming no failures. Um, and that's a lot of requests, so if, if we're more popular, that'd be a whole lot more requests. Um, and so the advantage of push is that it like, seems instantaneous. Um, you don't have to like, wait around for the information, or you don't have to go looking for it. But like, the more and more requests that you need to send out, um, the less instantaneous that is. So polling can scale better than linearly. Uh, so given the same conversation, um, polling requires the server to respond to a minimum of zero requests because not everyone has their Twitter client open. Maybe nobody is looking at Twitter, so they don't need to make any requests to get this data. And after these tweets have been set, sent, if like every single one of our followers wants to view these tweets, it's at most uh, 200 requests because there's 200 followers. And pull requests are cheap, so it's easy to do many of these at the same time if they all are all asking for the information at the same time. And this goes back to what I said before, that a pull request can scale um, better than linearly. But you need to use caching in order to make that happen. So it can be very expensive without caching. Um, so HTTP conditional get is one way to achieve this. Very simply, the server sends a last modified header. And when the client pulls this, it remembers what it saw in the last modified header. And when it sends this next request, it sends an if modified since header with exactly what it saw. And if the server doesn't have, if it has new data, it comes back with 200 OK, and it sends the data back. But if it doesn't have any new data, then it says 304 not modified, and it doesn't need to send you any data because you already have it. Memcache is another solution. Essentially, every pull request hits the cache every time, so no one's actually hitting the server. And the server effectively pushes up to the cache to update it, which is inexpensive just because it's guaranteed to only have um, one subscriber, which is the cache. Um, air handling. So relying solely on push requires the server to keep track of failures and retries for all of its subscribers. So if you're relying only on push and that is only happening when I'm giving it to you and you're never asking me for it, I need to make sure that you got it. Which means that if it fails, I need to try again. If it keeps failing, I just need to keep trying. And that's very complex. Um, it doesn't really make sense. It's not very reasonable. It's more reasonable for the client to actually keep track of their own failures and keep track of if it needs to ask for the information again. But you don't have to choose just between push or polling. For instance, pub hub sub hub makes use of both. So a subscriber initially pulls a feed from a publisher. Um, are most people familiar with PubHub, SubHub? Yeah. So there's publishers, subscribers, and hubs. I'm going to explain it to you anyways because I already have the slides. Um, a subscriber initially pulls a feed from a publisher. The feed references a hub. Uh, the subscriber can subscribe to the feed on the hub. And the publisher posts notifications um, when they have something to publish to the hub. And then the hub passes that on um, to the subscriber, tells it when it's updated. So in this instance, um, the publisher notifies the hub, and the hub notifies the subscribers. And this makes the hub very expensive, because it's sending lots of push requests, but each publisher by itself um, is very expensive. So it kind of consolidates all the expense into one area. And you can always fall back to poll and just go check the feed. So O status is a microblogging protocol. It's built on top of a pub hub sub hub. And R status is an open source project that uh, implements this protocol. Um, so you can go check that out if you're interested and see what the differences are between like how Twitter implements it. 
So is push ever necessary? Um, I think push is necessary when you need like very low latency updates with a very high frequency. But those are still general words. So it's up to each person to decide. It's like chat, for instance. Um, some people think that chat needs pull or push. Um, but there's many chat applications that actually just work on pull. Like Campfire is widely used in the Ruby community, and it only pulls every two seconds. But lots of people use it, and it works fine. Um, multiplayer interactive games, I think, is one place where it's really good to ask whether you need push or pull. Um, chess probably doesn't need push, even though that's multiplayer and interactive, but first-person shooters do. Because if I shoot you and you defend yourself, it's pretty important like how quickly those interactions get to the server. So polling is the sound engineering decision. It's been around for a long time. It's easy to scale. Um, but push is new and interesting. And if you're a startup or have an idea of your own, you're probably doing really new and exciting things. So maybe push is for you. Um, maybe there's cases that push are needed that like we aren't even aware of now. Um, but make sure you really need it. Because if you don't, then you're just going to pay a bunch of money to scale up if you actually succeed. Um, that went a lot faster than I was planning on. Um, I do have a really great song that I found during this, if you guys are interested in that. <laughs> I want to share this. I think it's great. <laughs> You just like do a dance party or something. <laughs> it gets better. Push. <laughs> 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 I think this song was actually like number one on the billboards in the 70s. You guys will listen to the rest or I don't, unfortunately. Um, Is anybody else? Yeah, so whenever you update the data on the back end, you can push the update to Memcache. Right? And so then your, your front end is just pulling from Memcache. And it's going to get the latest because you push your back end side update. But where would you be less notified? You can sort of the second key, right? You can say fetch foo and fetch foo dash date. Yeah. And then in your front end, when you generate that, you can just. Just the second key and use yeah. a hand one. Also, usually. Fast to build the tag each time and see if you need to send the data or not. Yeah. Like it's just a checksum of it. Right. Right. Okay. Any other questions? So, do you have any? Um, so, in this case, you talked a bit about like pushing for 200 like, Twitter followers, et cetera. Um, I work a lot in mobile where we have a notification is designed for one user. 
So we just push it because it's one to one. Mm -hmm. That probably falls within the new and exciting network. Yeah. So I don't know if you've had experience with that or the trade offs of doing that versus just having clients to check in every so often. Um, I mean, I think it's better if you are going to send push requests, like when you're sending like very small amounts of data. So like we used to have lots of push requests like on our phones, but they're not as expensive of requests. Like they're just sending like that tiny bit of data. Email list is sort of like a push request. Email list is like a push request. Yeah. yeah. If you have a list of users and you want to notify them. Yeah. Were you citing yeah. email as an example? Yeah. That's still all usually a client initiative. I mean, the, 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 the sending is still client initiative. Well, I think it's lists, email lists. Yeah, I think it's all still email. Yeah. Okay. So that's from client to server, but the server share is all push based. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a mixed model. But, but how, <laughs> like, how, how do you edge it like, scale, actually? That assumes that the number of servers server interaction is notably smaller than server client. Is that in like a Twitter thing? You don't know exactly who you're pushing to? Is that what you're so, I mean, the, the Twitter thing to me is interesting because um, this whole problem is about scaling up, right? And, and for, for most of us, like the scales that we're doing stuff is not on like Twitter scale. Um, and that's what makes it really interesting because if you're Twitter and you're really interested in getting developed, developers building products around their APIs, which they obviously are. Um, I think you have to be a little bit concerned about people just doing really stupid things and having super aggressive clients. Right? All it takes is like one or two mobile apps that are super aggressive to just like, I mean, really, even with really good caching, there's still going to have like these huge bandwidth spikes, and there's like all, there's like a whole new class of problem that comes up when you have really aggressive lots of tens of millions of Hmm. At least it's pushing a very small amount of data on a Twitter. You mean Pullman? Pullman. Words are hard. Yeah. Cool. Well, you guys have a long break now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to have more for you.